welcome to Escaping Purgatory, a podcast where we rewatch Supernatural and talk it through in the hopes we can finally escape this show. Join us each week and leave comments on upcoming episodes, and together we can escape Supernatural Purgatory. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we, we, we sound so enthusiastic and so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And this wasn't even the episode that we thought it was going to be. No, that's later seasons. And I should have remembered and I didn't. But um, yeah, this episode's garbage. <laughs> yeah, it's, it was so bad. I said this before, before we recorded that I didn't watch the last 10 minutes of it maybe more like when they go into the, from the point that they go into the warehouse yeah i stopped watching because i was just like well i don't care about the conclusion of this episode i'm gonna go clean <laughs> you missed absolutely nothing um it yeah it had a very like x files ending you know of like the truth is out there kind of vibe which yeah. I actually say this whole episode was very X Files y with all the fade in and fades out. It felt very 90s. Mm hmm. Yeah. That was. Yeah, it was not good. Yeah, it wasn't good. Like, let's. Okay, I, I think. Do you know, I, there wasn't even any like plot. <laughs> there wasn't even any like plot. Like, you know, main overarching season plot. There wasn't even any. There wasn't even any. Like it was, it was a filler. Of it was the most fillery of fillers I think I've we've seen in a very very long time. And so just so we all are caught up on what we're, which episode it is, yes. is season six, episode eight, all dogs go to heaven. Which I would hope so after the end of this, but we know that's not true because they're skinwalkers. I don't care, like whatever. So they actually all end up in purgatory, so they yeah. don't actually go to heaven. So there's that. Um, written by Adam Glass and directed by Phil Segrisha. And um, I mean, Dean's lighting, as always with Phil Segrisha, was mm -hmm. spot on. It was yeah. very nice. Same with Sam. They were both lit very nicely. That That's all I can really say that was good about this episode. <laughs> I agree. The, the, yeah, it visually, this episode looks good. I will say there, the fade in and fade out. And there were also some like, zooming moments which were quite hilarious like i feel like I, yeah. they just sort of like went all out there editorially because there wasn't much else going on <laughs> like yeah pretty much this could have been like a b plot of another F i don't know it was it was horrendous yeah can i go out on a limb and say this is worse than bugs can i say that Oh, I think so. I think it's the the problem. So the thing that I don't like about Bugs is how lazy it is. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like just the storytelling of it. It's mm -hmm. just so bad. It was an Indian reserve, and there's bugs now. Yeah. Okay. Like that's that's just lazy storytelling. Yeah. But at the same time, this isn't much better. I just I don't like the cultural side of Bugs. Yeah. Um, versus this one doesn't have that in it <laughs> no not so much i mean yeah i don't it was just i don't know like okay mark shepherd's in this episode at least let's go with that like that's our our redeeming quality oh yeah he is i can't even remember that <laughs> the very beginning of the episode that's right <laughs> yeah yeah so but even that feels weird like it didn't feel like Oh, it was so it was just so strange. Like this, this didn't feel like an episode of Supernatural because there's there's no reason for Mark and uh, for Mark for Crowley <laughs> to be like, here is a case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, what? <laughs> that was the only continu like continuity from the last few episodes was him turning up to be like, hey, we're still in season six, guys. Otherwise, this could have just been fit wherever. I just True. I feel like this was written because they needed an episode and they were like guys throw the darts at the board like what are we gonna do yeah it was yeah and i do I, again i do feel like this could have just been an x-files episode I, there's something 
about it, the quality of it. And I don't know if it is like the edit editing and the fading in and fading out of the scenes because they don't actually normally do that in Supernatural, that like mm -hmm. fade in. That just felt very, very X-Files. And even the like ending of this where everything, it has like world changing consequences that then go nowhere, right? You'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to the end that feels very okay. X-Files. Because they did that a lot there as well. It's like, wow, you know, all, an example of an of X-Files plot might be, oh, postal employees are aliens, and then like, it's never mentioned again. <laughs> it's, it's making that up off the top of my head. <laughs> but like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you took that from uh, <laughs> Men in Black. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did. <laughs> deep, deep, deep in the subconscious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you're yeah, you're right. Cuz like the I I feel like that's the issue with a lot of season 6 actually. Yeah. Like this idea that there's a whole bunch of sleeper cell monsters mm -hmm. out there because we see the same thing kind of happen with the vampires that there's like pods of vampires that are just being made. Yeah, supposedly. Mm -hmm. But then like as the end of season 6 comes. Yeah. I don't feel like we have this massive, I, 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 I'm probably wrong, but I don't really feel like there was a massive monster war, right? No, no, you're right. Like, it, I don't know. I'm starting to think that like season six might just be bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there are good elements of season six, but yeah. I think overall it's just... Meh. Yeah, I'm feeling the meh. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like, yeah. <sighs> I can't, so, uh, yeah. I think if you start comparing like season five and season six, you can understand where people are like, I miss classic supernatural. Like, where is it? Yeah. I, I do get it. I do. But okay. I feel like we should do this episode. I feel like we rambled about how bad it is. Um, yeah, we, we can do that. Um, I will say it, like I said, because I wasn't really paying attention to this episode, <laughs> my notes are terrible. Like I can't even remember what the recap was, but it was I rem so excuse my lack of enthusiasm for this episode. I think I'm just gonna say that. It's fine. <laughs> we'll man we'll make it through. We always find we always find the funny. Yeah, that's true. We tr that's very true. I mean we Yeah. Um <laughs> so the recap from what I remember was Oh, so they give you a red herring in the beginning because yes. it was like heart, uh, from Heart, I mm -hmm. think the episode was. Yeah. With the, the vampire, uh, the werewolf. Yeah. There was uh, the reveal of Solar Sam, mm -hmm. um, the reveal of out the alpha vampires. Um, I think there was Crowley in it. Yeah. Um, like how they were bribing... Um, or blackmailing, you know, them to work for Crowley. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he won't get his soul back. And that's a general gist. It was just, like, really, that's that's it. Yeah, it was It was kind of like a sum of what's happened. That was it. But you're right with yeah. the red herring with Maddie. Like, is Maddie? Maddie? Yeah. Madison? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and they can. She is mentioned that. in this episode. <laughs> she is! You're right. Yeah. They're not so far... Um, I, I don't know. I like skinwalkers in the supernatural universe, just like a an offshoot of werewolf genealogy. I feel like it must Probably. be. Yeah. Because they, they eat hearts. They eat hearts. They also change in the full moon? No. No. No, just any time. But then nice. season six is weird because monsters can do what they want when they want, apparently, anyway. Yeah. So. And we've never come across a skinwalker yet no they just it's the first time canine adjacent right mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. so instead of being a big werewolf <laughs> they're they're a house dog. werewolf <laughs> 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 they're all like german shepherd and doma but dobermans why was there not a skinwalker that was like a teacup poodle or something like that well, maybe Why are there all is. these big dogs maybe there is maybe oh. there's one in the room with you now 
No, oh, yeah. that'd be weird because I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Whose dog is this? <laughs> so uh, you've heard of the like cat distribution system, right? Of the world. What? Like you don't find a cat. The cat oh, yes. distribution system yeah. gets you. Yeah. yeah. Is this is this the same thing for skinwalkers? The the dogs don't find like you don't find the dog. The skinwalker finds you. <laughs> it has absolutely like horrifying implications though of like how many humans are actually in the pound, you know, and like what do you do? You can't just like turn up with a naked person in the like dog catcher's van. True. But very true. But then it also begs the question, shouldn't we just treat dogs better in case they're humans? Like what I don't know what this is anymore. <laughs> what is the moral of the story? <laughs> I don't know, but I was just thinking of like how, you know, you neuter dogs and stuff. I was just like, oh my God, can you imagine? Yeah. I mean. I will say this though. Yeah. They were all men. They were what? So. Okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> you just castrated a bunch of men. Uh, yeah. not saying that's necessarily a bad thing. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, this episode is. Uh, again, uh, I'm, I'm grasping at straws here, Amy. I'm grasping at straws. <laughs> I'm trying to get through this. We're doing what we can with the material we have. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So they're in Buffalo, New York, which looks very similar to other cities near the water. Uh, and there's a man talking on the phone and he's coming from like a, a not particularly good place. It looks like maybe like a strip bar or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and he's on he's on the phone with somebody, presumably like a babysitter. Um, and he's telling them like, did he did he make pee pee and poo poo? The way he, the way he said it was so weird <laughs> of like his age because he looks like a much older guy. And I was like, are you like a, a granddad or something? I, I <laughs> like, think what? I think he's supposed to be asking about his dog. That's what I got. I think he's asking about his dog. Oh, he is talking about his dog. <laughs> See, this is how much I didn't pay attention. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, he says, well, did you take him to the... No, because you could take a kid to the park. Yeah, but I think you're supposed to think that he's th talking about a kid. But I think he's actually talking about a dog. Because it fits with the theme of the episode. But you're right, it's never explicitly said whether he's talking about a kid or a dog. But I think he's supposed but... to be a dog. I guess so. This is the thing that annoyed me about this episode, right? Because it would make sense with the theme of the episode if this guy... So this guy gets murdered, right? So there's a, yeah, there's a dog yeah, yeah. growls. Sorry, I'm like skipping ahead, but like it crashes yeah, yeah, no, through the, thing, the windscreen of his car. So because the theme of the episode is like dog sleeper cells, it would have been funny if it was like his cute little like Pomeranian that he's talking to on the phone, like murders him. But we don't see the mm -hmm. dog that murders this guy. And then presumably it's supposed to be the like German shepherd dog that we see later on because this is the lady's landlord or whatever that he's protecting. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make any sense because as well as like not seeing the dog that attacks him, it, it reflected in his car is like a neon sign that says lawyers for hire. And I thought, oh, maybe he's a lawyer then that's making some like statement on that. No, that doesn't go anywhere. So this whole bit is like, what is, like, what was, what was the setup? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, and it would have, like I said, it would have made sense thematically in the episode if he was killed by his like, oh, precious baby that he's talking about on the mm -hmm. phone. But it's not, it's just, it's just not. And then that's never mentioned again. So why is this random man on the phone talking about like pee pee poo poo? <laughs> Look, there was no yeah. there was no need for any of that scene it doesn't explain there who really he wasn't like you, <laughs> I, you know the funny thing is i didn't even clock that he was like uh, yeah i again I, I did not like the beginning of this the whole episode i just wasn't paying attention like it just didn't capture my attention in any kind of way because like i didn't realize he was the landlord that like, was the one that was getting killed and like the thing is, we don't... So... 
I don't necessarily know oh. that he's her landlord either. Like, again, this could have been just a setup of, like, people getting attacked by things. Mm-hmm. It just it just floats. It makes no sense. It's not really connected to the other the rest of the episode, apart from it's someone getting attacked by something. Is this guy that lady's, like, crappy landlord? Is he getting attacked by a sleeper cell dog? Who knows? Or is he just being attacked by a werewolf? Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, God, yeah, it was bad. Yeah. All right. Well. <sighs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry to, like, cut into your, like, whole thing. This, this, it really annoyed me no, but, for the rest of this yeah. episode. How stupid the prologue was. And it wasn't even that good a blood splatter. No, it wasn't. That's bad. <laughs> but presumably, you know, okay, I'm just going to go one more thing. Presumably it was his sure. weird little tiny dog that maybe he was talking about on the phone because the hole in his windscreen was pretty small that it, like, shot through. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. No. I, anyway, so yeah, that happened. And <laughs> <laughs> we see Sam and Dean at um, Fat Max Rib Shack, which to be fair sounds amazing. I bet they do real good ribs. They oh, do, yeah. probably. A little barbecue sauce. I need to find this place. Yeah. <laughs> I did say in my notes, it's like real bright out. This is like post season 10 brightness like it's real bright out <laughs> in this this whole scene and then that's not followed through again the rest of the episode it's just this scene um and presumably like this is them having a meeting after their standoff with crowley um and like oh yeah we work for a demon now king of hell no less <laughs> um so Dean's on the phone to Bobby and he's explaining it like, I don't know, there's got to be a way to get out of it, essentially. I mean, if Crowley thinks we're just going to... Crowley thinks he's just going to what, Dean? <laughs> <laughs> Great entrance. I can't help. Every time I watch I watch it now, I'm like, hey, he's got a little crush on Dean. He's so mean to Sam. <laughs> he is. <laughs> and he's like, not that mean to Dean. <laughs> not at all. I do, so I do love the fact that they use Mark Shepard so much. Yeah. Like, his first they <laughs> have him, so they're just going to just throw him in episodes, even if it's completely unnecessary. Mm-hmm. And I do love that because I do love Crowley. Like, I think this is the only thing that's going to get me through season six. It's yeah. like Crowley just popping up, being annoying and popping out. <laughs> <laughs> so true to form. So true to character. Like, I love him so much. So he appears and uh, obviously he's like, you're going to do what? And he's like, is that Bobby Singer? Give him a kiss from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. Uh, so Dean puts the phone down. He's like, good news, boys. I've got a job for you. Um, and he sits down with them. Dean's not having it. He's like, you can take your job and shove it up your ass like immediately. Um, and there's this whole back and forth with them. Yeah, just the name calling alone. Carly mm-hmm. says, Dean, Dean, quit clutching your pearls. You've been working for me for some time now. Sam here even longer. Um, and Crowley's like, you know, he says to Sam, "You'd sell your brother for a dollar right now if you really needed a soda." I love, <laughs> love that line as well. Oh. So yeah, they, again, like Dean protests against working for Crowley without even knowing what the job is, um, mm-hmm. and Crowley d- just hurts Sam in response. Like he makes his skin sizzle. With presumably like some kind of hellfire and magic. Who knows what he can do now? He's the king of hell. Yeah, um, anything he wants. Anything at all. I'm surprised he doesn't have like a little crown or something. Like that seems like Crowley's deal, you know? Just something something shiny to be like, I'm king. I feel like he should have had like a tie pin. Yeah. With like a little like yeah, a little like crown on it or something. Or mm-hmm. something regal. Or like a like a lapel pin or something like that. Yeah, I agree with you. Like something subtle but like classy, or mm. a ring, like a big signet, like a signet ring. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean the the um, horseman had rings, mm. so why would not he? Exactly. Yeah, like something. So he's basically making the point that he like owns them. That's why he's hurting Sam. That he's claiming that he has Sam's soul. So you know they'll get it back if they do this job. Here's incentive. You bag me a live alpha, and I'll give you little Sammy salt back with a cherry on top. Which is, to be mm-hmm. fair, like, it's not crazy. They already did manage to capture 
the alpha vampire, which I feel is like, he's pretty strong. Yeah. Sam does say like the alpha vampire not good enough for you. And Crowley says, you know, your merry little hike up the food chain starts here. And he like slams down a tape, like a newspaper, meaning like this is how it begins. Mm -hmm. So this business, here we go. Businessman, the guy from the prologue, found dead in his car, chest ripped open. Uh, They think it's an animal attack, but his heart is missing. So yeah, werewolf. Dean makes the point that it's not a full moon, but we've already known this season so far that like weird stuff can happen. So maybe it is a werewolf. Um, Mm -hmm. But then again, maybe because it's not a full moon, there's a werewolf attack. Maybe it's an alpha werewolf. It's a good, you know, fine. Um, So then Crowley just says like, it's settled. You bag the howler, bring it home to Papa. See you soon, boys. And just disappears. <laughs> oh, love him so much. So, the the thing I was going to say yes. before that, I mean, this, I love, like I said, love Crowley interactions because he's just so sarcastic, so just like unnecessarily mean to people. Yeah. But he has enough time <laughs> to find a case and give it to Sam and Dean he is stalking them like he just just, like the way he just appeared right (laughs) and heard he because he was clearly listening in on the conversation with yeah that's so true to 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 get to do that interact like uh interjection yeah so he was just riding in the back seat well no i don't know if they they haven't trapped the impala yet um is it is it this season when they start Crowley and Crowley? Is this is it later? It's probably later. It's later, when Sam has yeah. I think it might be this season. I'm not sure. So yeah, like he was he was there the entire time. He's got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, even better, yeah, he like hires a minion to be like, boss. They mentioned your name. Now's a good time. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's their only job to like follow sam and dean around and wait till they mention Mm -hmm. crowley and then be like wait would this would this be a good line okay so like feed it back to him like if you say Mm. this it's gonna sound real cool if it doesn't work just say hello boys and they'll be fine (laughs) i don't know crowley has enough like one-liners for himself that i don't think he needs people to like bounce off his his bounce his ideas off of i think he's he's got that like down pat you're so right though <laughs> he's like writing in his fluffy journal today i prank sam and dean <laughs> <laughs> do you really enjoy I sent the them on a wild yeah. goose chase <laughs> <laughs> oh man to prove that i can and that i'm the alpha and i'm the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> I really feel like I'm winning him over. It will be a spring wedding. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Love it. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, they're in the Impala. They're going to do the case because they want Sam's soul back. I guess that the guy is a landlord because they make a point here of saying that he's he owns a bunch of slum grey departments and a couple of houses. And, like, Dean's just like, okay, is this what we're doing now then? And we're doing the case. Like, what? Um, He says, It's so far up our asses, we're we're, we're coughing sulfur. Great line. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And Sam's like, yeah, like, what are we supposed to do? This guy's got my soul, man. Like, (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't know why Dean is so, like, Crowley's right, like, pearl clutching about this. They've worked for demons mm-hmm. before. Sam has slept with one. Like, what is the problem here? I guess because, I mean, Dean did point out in the last episode that it never works out well <laughs> for them when they work with demons. Yeah, true. Uh, but yeah, the, the moral grandstanding is getting a bit much, Dean. It is a bit much, especially because it's like Crowley. He did help them stop the apocalypse. He did. And like, the thing is, I, I know they're not the same, mm-hmm. but you know, he, he worked with Cass a lot. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> maybe maybe that's why. Maybe that's the real reason. It's like, you know, if we work with another super powerful, like, supernatural being, you know, we're just going to, like, I'm going to get my feelings hurt again because Cass is not talking to me now. <gasps> and, like, I don't want to form another relationship with an- <laughs> another another supernatural being. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's definitely probably true. It's just, yeah, it's the Cass feelings. 
<laughs> anyway, like Dean just says, like, like I'm working for a demon. I don't know who you are. Like, I'm just taking a second to adjust. I guess to be fair to Dean, like a month ago, he's living his little apple pie life, and now he's on the road working for demons, and like it is a lot. It's fine. It is a lot. The thing, the thing is, Crowley could make him work. Like, I don't know why Crowley isn't using more of a mob, uh, like a Italian mobster vibe. Like, you know, I'm going off of TV yeah, mobs yeah. of like, we can protect Lisa and Ben. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't know. I still don't know if Dean would go for that. I don't think he trusts him enough. But like. Right. But they, but he would have no choice because they know Lisa and Ben. That's true. I mean, the, also. The threat is there. Like, Crowley kind of did do Dean like a solid, right? Because he left him alone for a whole year. It's only now he's back hunting. that He's like, hey, come work for me. I have your brother's soul. He's known he's had his soul the whole time. If you True. got it, really. Um, you know. He's got it. So it's only once Dean decided he was back in the game that he was like, yeah, well, now you work for me. Like, <laughs> he left him alone for a long time. Uh, that's true. That's, that's as long as he could hold back his feelings. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> shipping Drowley. Screw Destia. I'm that Drowley is my new ship. That's all the focus is put on. Taking it's fine. <laughs> but I'm I'm vibing like vibing with this little like pulling his pigtails in the playground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Sam, um, is claiming that he's still the same person despite not having any feelings. Like he still has the same memories, likes the same music still thinks about Susie Heiser and Dean's like oh I know her and Sam's like can you blame me like look I know you don't trust me but I, I can't take back what I did but I am gonna prove to you I'm still your brother I still maintain Sam just says what he needs to say in the moment at this point <laughs> yes because if he really wanted to convince Dean he wouldn't have picked a random girl in biology class yeah. it would have been Jessica <gasps> yeah that's so true where the like emotional have... mention. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Sam and Dean are FBI agents now, and they are looking at a body bag. It can't be no, it's not the same guy. I was like, it can't be the same lot landlord. Like that was days ago. It's not. Um, it's someone on the docks. They introduced themselves as Holt and Wilson, and I was trying to think of the like rock names, and I could not think of Holt and Wilson. I'm like, it'll come to me. <laughs> this was so random. So the detective asks, like, what are the feds doing here? And Sam says, Oh, we're specialists, and they call us in to answer the questions of mouth breathing dick monkeys. And I was like, what? Where did that even come I know, it was, from? It was such a um like he he was like this with the um sister yeah in that episode the ver the truth one mm -hmm. like he just yeah it was weird i don't like the thing is like having no emotions doesn't make you like just say stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah like he, he had some of his memories presumably that's what he just said so he should know how to like be charming you know Mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, it was weird. And like, even Dean's like, what? What? Um, so they they move on from that. And they say, yeah, this guy was found. Um, same deal, like his heart's missing. Um, so that, you know, they're asking if he has any enemies. And the detective's like, yeah, but like, I don't think it was a wolf. Like, and his enemies were wolves or cougars. <laughs> um, <laughs> And so, yeah, that's basically it. Like they, they think it's an animal attack. Back at the the motel, Dean's asleep, and he went. I quite like this scene, to be fair. I will. I will. Sorry to interrupt, him, but I will say that Phil Segrisha can film Dean while he's asleep anytime. I don't know why I like this. Like it was also really, really strange. Like the when he turns around to talk, talk to Sam. Yeah. Like instead of just like sitting up in bed he like stays with his back to sam and like it was such a weird i know he was like waking up yeah but there was something about it that was like all right just flash your ass at everybody <laughs> i'm not complaining really 
but like this is very strange <laughs> yeah who turns like that like to talk to someone that way it's just like so uncomfortable yeah yeah it was weird um yeah, because he's, he's asleep, like, in his clothes, as normal Dean does, you know, not under the covers. He's not comfortable. Um, and he looks up, and Sam is, like, still fully dressed in a suit and everything. And he's getting ready. Obviously, Sam doesn't sleep, so they make a comment on that. You didn't sleep. Because you don't sleep. Right. Yeah, it's not creepy at all. <laughs> so... Yeah, they continue to get ready and Sam says that he's been like researching and stuff. Um, so he's been trying to connect the victims because whoever they hate, they kill when they become werewolves. I don't think that was ever established previously that they were like connected. In heart, that was the oh, case. Right. So actually. Maddie went after her boss because she he yes. was like a butt face mm -hmm. um but even still i don't have we had many werewolf episodes i really don't remember no i really think it was just that one hmm. i don't think there's been another one since um so yeah sam's found the connection essentially <laughs> there was something about some of the shots in this as well like just talking about camera work is they some of the this isn't a scene where this happened, but I was thinking about it for later on. There's some scenes they shoot where it like makes their height difference even more exaggerated in this episode. This is kind of one of them where like Dean's like looking up at Sam like constantly. There are some I if you if you wanna rewatch this episode, go back. Some of the camera work is interesting because they do go like there's some very much like down camera shots like looking up where it makes them look hmm. kind of tall and the people they're talking to look kind of little and then they do it to Dean sometimes to make him look smaller than Sam by quite a lot but it's kind of I feel like they just used this episode to like play around with some shots because they knew the writing wasn't great it's like let's try this <laughs> and see how it plays um yeah yeah it sounds like it so they pull up at this this house that Sam has found um and a lady with like a young child answers the door and Sam asks for a guy called Cal Ga Ca yeah, Cal. We don't know what it's short for. His name's just Cal. She was like Callum or mm -hmm. whatever. Um and she seems a bit cagey, but she lets them in. There is a dog in the house, a German shepherd when they come in, and like the woman lets the little boy like run around. Um and it's very much like it she, she is acting like she kind of knows that this guy mm -hmm. is like probably done something wrong. Um, he eventually like, so Cal is her boyfriend, presumably not the dad of the boy she has. It's just the way they say it is like, yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. So this guy gets up eventually and he looks like he's been like on a bender all night. Like he's, he's still dressed, even though he's clearly just woken up. Um, mm hmm. And when, like, he comes in, the, the dog barks at him as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never trust never trust people that dogs don't like. And this is a, a very... This is true. Yeah, like, it's a very good tell of, of a person. So one thing about, like, the way Sam was interviewing the woman. Yes. He's, like, really aggressive. He is. And, like, because he walks in the house with his gun out. And, like, I guess... I guess the not not sleeping for a year is starting to catch up. That like every suspect is the person. Like there's no other investigation. Like Cal is the one. Like he is the one who they have to capture. Yeah. Like this is to get the job done, and that's it. You know. I guess he doesn't care, and it, it kind of shows up later on with some of the things he said. Like he doesn't really care. He gets caught in the crossfire. Like yeah, he's like, oh well, you know, why don't we shoot? this woman just to check she's not a werewolf like that kind of mentality <laughs> yeah yeah true um so yeah they introduced themselves to to cal and asked him where he's been he said he was out last night with like a couple of beers with some friends and obviously it was more than a, a couple of beers um so you know 
Dean kind of follows that line of questioning of like, you know, did you get drunk and black out thinking that he is the werewolf? Um, mm-hmm. And Sam's like, yeah, who knows what you've really been up to at night? <laughs> <laughs> so they're investigating the death of the this other guy whose name was Ronald. That they, and it turns out that this is Cal's brother. So mm-hmm. yes, they're right. He's connected. Um, and they go on, Cal goes on to say this thing and he's like, Look, we are differences, I guess. You love your brother, of course, but Ron had a lot of problems. He was uh, volatile. And Dean kind of looks at Sam like, <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you could say that about each, like, I mean, each of them. <laughs> it was how many episodes ago that like Dean beat Sam up for like, no reason. One before last. Not a lot of reason. <laughs> so, you know, they, and they were saying like last time he was there, they had to call the police because he like shoved Mandy, his girlfriend. Um, so they called, you know, they called the cops quite you know, fine. And then their landlord was found dead, as we mentioned previously. So that's the other connection. Um, and the landlord had set, sent them eviction papers because they were behind on their rent. And Mandy is like, wasn't that an animal attack too? And Sam says, yeah, both of them were. And then he's like, scowling. <laughs> it's so unsubtle. Um, so yeah, and then Cal's like, okay, so what do we have to do with that? And Dean's pretty much like, oh, you know, fine, nothing. Have a good day. And they just like leave. <laughs> mm-hmm. So outside, Sam is c- trying to convince Dean to just like take Cal now, just like to take him out essentially. Um, mm-hmm. Dean is like, no, look, we have to make sure we don't just like load people into our trunk and take him to Crowley. There's so many scene changes in them. Like, they just go from place to place to place, and things happen, and they go. I know that's how TV shows work, but like, <laughs> yeah, but like it's. I don't know. It was. Just, it was just badly done, I guess. They were definitely like, like this. This whole next bit doesn't really matter either. No. Like, yeah, we see that Carl's a bad guy, or well, not even a bad one. Well, yeah, just the bad guy. He like sits around and gets drunk all day and all night. Yeah, and then he goes to drive and then gets killed. Like literally, that was it. That's just, that's literally it. He goes on a bender all night. Yeah. and gets killed the next morning. That's it. I'm not even gonna re- like. No, I'm not even gonna say it. Like that was it. Cal's Cal's a guy who <laughs> drinks, gets killed, um, pretty much. I looked this I looked this guy up who played Cal because I'm sure I recognize him from something and like he's just he's one of these actors that is just in everything, you know, oh, okay. as like mm-hmm. a guy, <laughs> which is good, <laughs> good for him. But like I was like, oh, I, I kind of thought he'd been like, I don't know, a, a main character or something else, but I was wrong. He just just looked like someone else. So we see that like that it was a dog essentially that is the same German shepherd from Mandy's house. And then once Cal is dead, he turns into a naked guy who yep. is just so non-distinct compared to Cal. I was like struggling to tell them apart. <laughs> I don't know. See Cal, I thought, no, not Cal, the dog. Yeah. Lucky. I don't know what his lucky, actual name yeah. is, but we'll call him lucky. I can't um, he, that guy I recognized. Yeah. But I don't know where from. Like he's also in like everything. I know. He's pro- he's probably a serial killer in Bones <laughs> and something else. Yeah. Called he's in he's in all of the TV. Yeah, all of the TV. Just everyone's always in TV all the time. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll find out later what he's been in. He probably has been on X Files. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the dog is a, the dog is a man, and then we see the dog man as a dog get into Mandy's bed and like lick her face and I was like no yep don't enjoy this and this is why you put the animals outside the room <laughs> when you get busy because <laughs> you never know <laughs> oh yeah because you like watch the shower and stuff as well like it's super yeah. creepy I, yep. I feel like in later in the episode you're supposed to like feel a bit sorry for him I'm like no he was a creepy stalker yeah yeah and I'm glad Mandy was also like, you are a creepy stalker. But, you know. Get the hell away from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's the next... Is it later on that day? I guess it's the next day. Yeah. And uh, Lucky is waking up Mandy by licking her in the face, which is gross. And uh, she says... Honestly, 
you are the only decent boyfriend I've ever had. So this, yeah, this is where she goes into the shower. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then we go back to where the bar was and they, uh, Cal's body is being wheeled off and they're like, oh, I guess it's not him. It's somebody else. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam's line of masterful det- uh, deductions, Sherlock. <laughs> it's like, that's actually not a bad line. Uh, Dean is whittling down that it can't be a werewolf because it's in the daylight. That seems kind of weird. Um, and Sam says, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. You know, so you know this means uh, we're down to one suspect, right? And he's like, it's Mandy. It's got to be Mandy. <laughs> be Mandy. And uh, Can you do it? Do what? Shove her in the trunk, serve her up to Crowley. Yeah, Sam, I can do it. Because she's our mom. And Dean has a soft spot for mothers. <laughs> yeah. The, the, this house reminded me so much of home. Yes. But they just like redid the cabinets. <laughs> 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 <sighs> and um, so we're back in Mandy's house and he's, she's playing with her son who's not feeling well. Um, and she gets him some like juice. And like Lucky brings over a toy and they start to play with the toy and then the, it rips. Um, that's it. <laughs> I didn't kind of get that. Like there was no reprimand for the dog for like breaking the toy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't understand like it was the dog trying to communicate something in some kind of way. I don't know. It was just stupid. Um, Lucky's then watching the TV yeah. as um, they find out that the body is like been found mm-hmm. uh they go for a walk oh she then sees blood on his coat oh, yeah and she's like oh if you killed a bird again bad dog uh they go outside for a walk and she- mandy's talking with like some neighbors presumably mm-hmm. um and they're setting up like a play date and uh sam and Dean approach and so that you know they want to talk to them talk to him about cow mm-hmm talk to her about cow uh they come into the house and lucky comes over um and sam's like you know i know this isn't a good time but you need to come with us and she's like you think i, you, I have something to do with cow and dean's trying to like calm it down by saying no I just you know we're trying to sort of dot the i's and cross the yeah. t's um and she's like well can we do this later? Like my boyfriend, I just found out my boyfriend's dead. Can we just like not do it now? And Sam's like, no, we have to do it now. She then goes on to explain that her kid has the flu and he's been up all night. Mm -hmm. And, um, Dean's like, well, okay. So you've been with him all night. And she's like, yeah. Um, and they go talk to the son. We don't see that conversation, but they conclude it by saying that, okay, it's not her because she was with the boy Mm -hmm. all night. Like, keeping like making sure he's fine and sam gets like really defensive he's like fine she still had time to wolf out dean last werewolf was in bed with me and she wolfed out that's true so yeah Yeah. they haven't done another werewolf case since maddie um dean tells him not to take it personally which is interesting that like this is the thing that triggers an emotion in sam is it just, is it though? Was it just bringing it up to get the job done? Like, I don't trust Sam. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, Dean's still not convinced and she, he doesn't want to hand her over to Crowley. And uh, they're going to they're gonna split up. Mm-hmm. Sam's going to stay and watch the house. Yeah. And Dean is going to go check out the crime scene again to see if they've missed anything. Mm-hmm. And Sam, sorry, Dean... It's like, why don't I stay? Because clearly he's like, well, I don't trust you to like not just bag her and yeah. drop her yeah. off or like call Crowley and just come get her. Um, and he's like, well, Sam says, Dean, look, I, know, I still know how to do my job. I'm going to watch her. That's all. Trust me. Yeah. So this this jump, again, I wasn't paying attention to this episode at this point because I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey, why is he in a playground at night? I, I thought I'd missed something. Yeah. But I had no. They just... He just, he's followed Lucky. Yeah. Somehow uh, to a park because he's now at a park. No, he's like, he's like watching Um, Mandy's window 
from the park, which is presumably across the street from her, because he watches him through the window. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. Okay. All right. Lucky comes out, turns into a man, talks to another man. <laughs> and as this is happening, like, Lucky's smelling the air. Yeah. Um, and he can sort of smell some, something and he's kind of suspicious, but like doesn't really do anything. Uh, he talks to the other man. We don't hear that conversation. And then Lucky gets real, real suspicious, turns into a dog, runs away mm -hmm. and uh, gets hit by a car. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the people in the car like pick up the dog and put him inside and take him off. And Sam runs after him like, wait, 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 that's that's my dog. That's my dog. <laughs> And that's the end of that. Realizing they did this, they basically did this episode um, in what we did in the shadows, but like a million times better. <laughs> Where like Lazlo gets sent to like animal control. Is it Lazlo? No, it's not. This is spoilers, I guess. Guillermo gets sent to animal control. What's it? No, it is the first one. The first one I said. I think it's they like, let get like caught as bats and they end up in like the animal control center and then Guillermo has to come and get them out <laughs> that's basically this episode it says it's better what we do in the shadows yeah well yeah because it's done with comedic effect and like better storytelling <laughs> <laughs> oh why don't was it other animals have to shout like dog as they transform that would be that would have made this episode <laughs> yeah. 1000 times better <laughs> <laughs> or like they have to say their breed name, so he'd have to be like German Shepherd. Yeah, so that's so good. <laughs> Poodle. <laughs> I'm not very good at my Matt Berry impression, but he'd say it amazingly. <laughs> not even <am> I. <laughs> oh, all right, let's do it. So yes, Dean is back in the motel, pining for Lisa. Mandy, I think, has made him think about Lisa and her kid. This because yeah. she also looks a little bit like Lisa, just in the fact she's got dark hair too. Um, so <laughs> and a little boy, yeah, and a boy, <laughs> the boy. Um, <laughs> he's thinking about ringing her, but he doesn't. Um, of course not. So yeah, uh, Sam's on the phone. Dean's got nothing. Sam's got everything. It's not a werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam knows that this is a skinwalker. Uh, so and explains that. He's the dog. Like, it all just comes out, essentially. And mm -hmm. Dean's like, wow, I haven't heard of a skinwalker in years. Again, tying into the fact that there are more monster appearances at different times. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, Sam's already spoken to Bobby. We didn't get to see that conversation. Apparently, they can change anywhere, nope. anytime, and they can infect you with a single bite. Otherwise, otherwise there are werewolves. Um, so silver will work on them, too. And they eat hearts. So Sam didn't catch him, but he knows where he is, obviously, because he got taken to the vets. They go to <laughs> the animal hospital and like they just they just take the dog. Like, how did they do this? It's like that's my dog, bye. Is that what happens? I'm sure you have to like, show some ID. I have no clue. Or something. Um so, <laughs> so they threaten this dog, because like Dean holds up a gun and he's like Look, we could do this basically like the easy way or the hard way. So it's like a gun or jeans. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like a choke chain thingy as well. <laughs> what? Soul or not, that's funny. It wasn't that funny, Sam. It's not that funny at all. <laughs> like, what? It could have lasted an actual joke. Like, there have been a couple. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Um, so they take Lucky to their motel room and tie him up with silver chains um, and basically interrogate him. Like, you know, what what's going on? Like, why is he living with the family? <laughs> and Sam, Sam says, roll over, Lucky, speak. Again, like with the jokes. Like, what is this? Like, Dean is not impressed either. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. I know Sam had bad humour, but this is this is taking the cake. Yeah, like this is already like quite a bad episode, and the humour in it is like off as well. It's like, what is going <laughs> on? Um so Sam threatens torture because you know he's soulless. There's like lot 
there's a lot going on. The guy's not speaking. Sam's like, I'm going to cut you with this silver knife. And Dean's being the empathetic one for once. And is like, mm-hmm. look, man, I get it. It's family. Because that's, that's all, all Dean knows. Yeah. Um, so he's like... You killed every threat that came near them. You care about them. In your own wackadoodle kind of way. It's obvious. Like, we know about the guy that we saw. And we saw the guy, like, smack him around the face as well, didn't we? Like, he was in charge of him. I think that happened. Yeah. Yeah, yeah kind of. I, like I said, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> um, so, like, Dean's basically like, look, unless we sort something out, you're putting them in danger. Uh, and that, all this crap is going to come from them. Um, as Dean knows. As Dean, yeah. It's a bit sad, really. The guy's like, yeah, you know, the guy I was talking to, he's also whatever... I am. He clearly hasn't been like a skinwalker for very long, I don't think. He doesn't seem to know no. the rules. Um, and he says there's about 30 of them and they were all recruited. So he explains that like, essentially he was homeless, but he got recruited into this. They bit him. He became like a skinwalker so he could turn into a dog. And the plan is that they go and check it with families and then when they get like a super sig- secret signal they turn all the families as well. So there's like suddenly loads of them. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, he says 30 becomes 150. And the, this has been organized by a pack leader. Sam is like, well, it's an alpha, but the guy doesn't seem to like know the concept of an alpha. Mm -hmm. So he's like, he's strong, but like, I don't think he's what you're looking for. Like it doesn't seem particularly special. He's just stronger essentially. Um, and there's other guys right. like him, like we're not the only pack. You know, they obviously want to stop this happening because like that's a lot of lot of monsters all of a sudden. Um and when the guy is like still a bit like not very cooperative, and Sam is again like taunting him with like a ball and stuff, and like it's not very funny. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um even scenes like Sam, like that's not helping. Yeah. Dean kind of goes like, "Look, are you really gonna? Are you really gonna bite your family? Like, are you really gonna do that? Because you love them. Like, you're not gonna, you're not going to." Because I'm gonna guess that these are the only people who, in your pathetic life, have ever showed you any kindness. The guy's gonna help them because Dean's been all Deany. So again, this whole scene is like dragged out for no reason. Why they even go to a separate location to talk about this? Basically. Sam is like, how are you going to take this guy out? And Dean's like, I've got a sniper rifle. That is the scene. That's this whole scene. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're talking about the fact they don't have an alpha and they're going to like take this guy out to stop all the monsters from turning. Sam's like, well, Crowley's not going to be happy. Why does Crowley care? There's no alpha involved in this case anymore. I feel like he would not care. He wouldn't. He like, I guess the thing is if they, if they bagged the pack leader, they might be able to get to the alpha that is true but even still they, they know that i mean to your point um it has no greater effect on the world so they they don't go off to the next town to find all these other packs of skinwalkers that could suddenly turn 30 families into 150 right you know, anyway and also like the pack leader has to give the signal so almost like why does it matter whether they kill or kidnap him like why does that matter because either way, he won't be able to get the signal. Yeah. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, because obviously Sam wants to, like, grab this guy. And Dean's like, well, it could lead to these people being turned. Like, are you okay with that? And Sam's like, no, I'm just, a- you know, of course not. He's like, I'm just asking the question. Like, we could go take the guy instead. <laughs> and Dean, like, kind of says, said, like... So just... Stop pretending. And do us both a favor. And then he walks off. So that's the whole tension here, is that he feels like Sam is putting on an act, which I think he is. I'm with Dean on this, and I have been the whole time. <laughs> and it, I mean, it is confirmed. Yeah. It is confirmed at the end of the episode. That's very so. true. So yeah, so now they're on top of a building. Don't know, are both of them? I wonder when Dean learned to use a sniper rifle. This is one of the only times we see him use one. And I feel like it's a quite a hard skill to have. I feel like we've seen him use one before. 
I, I, I do. I thought that too. And then I think we're thinking about Gordon. Oh. Because there's that one where he's like trying to shoot Sam. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I just, it just seemed weird to me. I don't know. Dean doesn't seem like a very like sniper rifle kind of dude, you know, like the patients involved. Well, I don't know. Cause they can, they can do, um, all nighters like, and like yeah, stakeouts. You're right. You're right. I just feel like he's more of a, like, you know, chop on off the heads rather than shoot from a distance kind of dude, which he is in this episode too, to be fair. So maybe not the, the head chop in, but the shooting with the silver bullets. Sam's probably better, but I don't think Dean trusts Sam not to just like shoot everybody. That's true. Which, to be fair, again, happens. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, one thing yes. that really annoyed me about this. Sorry, I'm going to cut ahead on this a little bit. Uh, so, they're up on the roof, sniper, yeah. right? And he can't get a clear shot. No. Everybody there is a skinwalker. Yeah. And he has a sniper rifle and he's not that far away. He could have taken the shot and taken out the alpha and the per- Like the bullet's going to go through two people. It would have been fine. But I think the problem was is that they brought Mandy and her kid. And I think they were the people in the But way. they don't see that yet. Oh. Yeah, you're right, actually. Like it wouldn't have mattered. Why'd they need a clean shot? No. And like, they were, I guess it's like about drawing attention. They end up shooting everyone in this scene anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it really didn't matter <laughs> I thought it too and I was like oh, yeah I know what you mean I know what you mean I guess it's more like maybe if you have to like shoot through someone else there's not a guarantee that he'll take the pack leader down he might escape that's what it is. Yeah. I guess anyway but apparently he's such a good shot that you can like <laughs> shoot out people in a, a warehouse so come on <laughs> This is what I mean. Like, where is this skill? It's not really mentioned before or after. I don't feel like he does it again. I don't know. They just decided that he can do this. I feel, would Mm -hmm. Sam not be the better shot? That's what I think so too. Like, why isn't, why hasn't Sam had the, again, it's a trust thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't trust him not to beef it. (laughs) (laughs) So we we see that like there is the pack leader is actually not the guy they think it is. They think it's this like guy with like curly hair, but it's actually a bold guy who seems to be calling the shots. But like we see another guy essentially. So then they mm-hmm. bring out um Mandy and her son and everybody goes inside the building. Again, the tension is that like Dean can't get the shot this whole time. Um Right. And Sam's tra- telling him to take the shot even though it would kill Mandy. Yeah. Because he has no soul, which has been well established by this point. <laughs> but he's a bad dude. Yes. So, plan B? We've got one? They, they've always got a plan B. They just make it up as they go. I don't even know why they bother making plans anymore. It's just on the fly. I mean, it. it this was a good idea. <laughs> it's not a plan, it's an idea. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, this is going to be really, really brief because this is when I checked out <laughs> of this episode. So I have no clue what, like, why any of this stuff ensues. Not, not um, a lot happens, it's just a lot of shooting. <laughs> yeah, basically, it seems like it. So uh, it's Mandy is like, what's going on? We don't know anyone here. Um, Lucky, who's now a man, is like, I am sorry. Um you know, Mandy's trying to plead with all these people. Um, and this this big guy, the guy who was like being mean to Lucky before is like, it's got everything to do with mm-hmm. you. Like all the deaths are your fault because your dog is killing people when he's not supposed to. Um, you know, he's asking if he's with them or not. And if they are, if he is, if Lucky is with them, he has to turn Mandy and the kid now yeah. or he'll kill them. Um they all like the big guy sniffs the air uh and sam starts shooting yeah and shooting and shooting Mm. lucky like grabs them and takes them off to safety kind of uh there's lots of like oh i've got your back kind of shooting until it doesn't work because there's one guy who's like approaching dean 
and for some reason Sam's not there so he's trying to struggling with the rifle and the way that he's got it through the chicken wire he can't get it back out so he turns around and like shoots him with a pistol mm-hmm. uh, and then Lucky transforms into a dog <laughs> to help and Mandy's like horrified clearly because yeah. like this is her dog <laughs> and it was a man the whole time bad dog yeah he gets injured kind of in some way it, again so i like, wasn't paying attention he, don't care. he has a face off with another dog man and then the dog man transforms back into a man and just shoots him he's like this isn't a dog fight okay. or something i can't remember what he says but it's something to that effect oh yeah so you think this is going to be a dog fight yeah. and then dean shoots the big man yeah he it looks like sam's gonna shoot lucky but he doesn't mm-hmm. I guess he thinks he's just going to die anyway. Um, he just leaves. So Sa- Sam was going to shoot him, but Lucky, like, got out of there. Oh, he yeah. did? Oh. Okay. I'm sorry. that I'm so bad at this. But like I said, I didn't care at this point. <laughs> it, so not much like, happened. <laughs> like, that was it. It's like, so basically, like, <laughs> they shoot everybody. Lucky got shot. Sam goes to shoot Lucky because he's soulless now. Um, but when he actually raises his gun to do it, Lucky's gone. Yeah. And Mandy watches the whole thing happen. Like, what the hell are you people? Yeah, Mandy's just like, like what is going on? Why are two FBI agents shooting dogs now? Why is my dog a man? Why? Poor Mandy. <laughs> like, traumatized for life. Poor Mandy. Lifetime of therapy. Yeah. Um, exactly. But yeah, it was... Just not shooting, man. Like, honestly, um, <laughs> which I don't know. Say it's supernatural. Like, I don't know. There's always these fight scenes and stuff, but usually they're they're, they're kind of up close and personal. Yeah, and this was just not. I don't know. No. And also, like they're shooting dogs, man. It's hard to get behind that, right? I know they're like dog ma- men, but yeah, I don't know. And also, they are reprimanding this guy for killing people. You know. So, okay. Yeah. They've essentially, what they've done there is protected a murderer. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So we see we see Mandy's house again and Lucky as a man, like, knocks on the door. And I did think for a moment, like, is she going to forgive him? But she was like, you should not be here. <laughs> um, so he says, like, you're the only family I've ever had. I know that sounds like... And he's like, trails up, he's like, I know I am. It's just no one's ever been so nice to me before. Which I, I understand. It's quite sweet, but also, no. Like, you could have... The thing is, you could have not been creepy about it. You know? You didn't have to watch your this shower. Just saying. Exactly. So Mandy's like, no, get away, you psycho. Don't ever come near me again. And shuts the door in his face. So And we see Lucky transform back into a dog and leave forever so he's living life on the road <laughs> it's it's a bit of a sad ending i guess i do feel sorry for lucky like he didn't ask to get cha- like turned he was homeless before he was turned as well so he was taken advantage of for sure uh but you also don't need to go around killing people like i know like he's trying to help them yeah kind of but like it didn't help them in any kind of way i feel like maybe there was supposed to be like some kind of commentary on like he was treated better as a dog than he was as a human but it just doesn't come across in this like you have to search for that meaning yeah and like the thing is what he's done is just made her life more difficult because like presumably it wasn't a single income house and now it is because she cow's gone so like it's just her income now and she was already behind on the rent so yeah. yeah, and just because a landlord's dead doesn't mean that the rent's not exactly. due. Exactly. Right. Why, why? Why would that solve the problem? <laughs> Wait. Exactly. I don't know. It's just it's difficult to feel sorry for him, even though I think you're supposed to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess you're supposed to connect Dean and this guy together, right? Like they're in a similar kind of situation yeah, yes. where, like they found a family uh-huh. and like put them in danger and this, that and the other, but Dean is actually like, and Dean's done some horrible things. Mm-hmm. And so has this guy, but really, I don't know. 
I, I can't get behind it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, again, they made the the thing is like it, I think if they just shown the dog like protecting the family rather than him like being kind of creepy stalker towards this lady, like I yeah. feel like he would have been a more a sympathetic character. Like I'm just protecting the family yeah. that took me in, but it's not just mm-hmm. that, and that's what makes it like unsympathetic. I feel exactly. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like had had the scene with the shower been slightly different in that, like, he goes and he doesn't watch her get in, but, like, puts his back to the door and, like, watching out, watching the house yeah. while she's in the shower alone would have made that, like, better. Or well, they could have done that really cute dog trick where the dogs, like, put their paws over their eyes. That would have yeah. made this episode better. <laughs> where he's like... <laughs> <laughs> that's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm ho- I, just, I don't remember if there was any interaction between like Lucky the dog and the kid because it's the Lucky the dog and the kid like he licked his face and stuff. That would be really weird as well. There wasn't there was only the bit where the kid was ill and like he brought him a toy and played with him and made him laugh and stuff. So that was kind of cute. I can't like that's fine. Yeah, that is yeah. fine. I don't know. I, yeah, I do kind of feel... Do I feel sorry for... I don't know. I don't feel like I have enough emotions. To, I'm sold as Sam in this situation. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so the final scene of this episode... Again, but this is the bit I was talking about where it's like, this is X-Files, because they just sit around and talk about it, and then it's never mentioned again. So they see a woman run past with a dog, and Dean's like, I'll never look at a dog in the same way. Dean, you're already scared of dogs. You got ripped apart by hellhounds. What are you talking about? You're never going to look at a dog in the same way. You're already scared of dogs. You have me looking at dogs. (laughs) (laughs) It's already a fear you have. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. Um, So he says, like, you know. Makes you wonder, though, huh? What? How many packs are out there? What if they're all just waiting for the signal? And that Sam just, like, dismisses this. that's, That's all that's said about it. And yep. it sounds like I was, the... and that was all there ever was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and again, like they just drop these big like X Files. You find out Bigfoot's real, and then they like never mention it again. <laughs> that is an episode that happened. What? <laughs> so the thing is, though, like the same thing happened with the vampires. Yeah. They found out that vampires are making trafficking yeah. rings. But they only went after one. Like they haven't got. Are they are they communicating it with Samuel and then they're going off and like fixing all the towns? And like maybe I don't there know. There seems to be like a massive monster recruitment drive, and neither of them care. Like they only care about getting like Sam's soul back. And then it's like, mm-hmm. what about all the other stuff that seems to be happening in the world? Like they just don't. They don't care. They don't, no, not even a little bit. They're so, I think they're so self, self-involved self in this season. I think that's the yeah. point, though, because I, when we find out that, like, everyone else cares and there's loads of stuff going on in the background, it kind of makes you realise just how selfish the, the Winchesters are. The thing is, it's not, it's not the Winchesters, though, is it? It's Dean. Yeah, it is Dean. How selfish Dean, because I guess Sam is doing something about it. He's working with Samuel. To presumably do something about this, kind of. Yeah. But Dean is all about like we need to get your soul yeah. back, like whatever it mm-hmm. takes. Oh, God. How how does Cass deal with this? Like he is full <laughs> sorry, but like I, I just need to talk about this because like when they eventually find out everything else is going on and like things have been going on without their knowledge, and like Dean is so self righteous, and you're like, oh, my dude. You didn't care up until the moment that you thought you were being left out of something. You didn't care about it. Where does this come from? I mean, I'll talk about this more as we get into like those episodes, but it's going to annoy me mm-hmm. big time. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, we have also said that it is time for Dean to be selfish. It, you're right. Because he cares so much about the uh, world and like everything. But there's a time and a place <laughs> you don't get to be selfish and then get to be self-righteous about it right True. i think that's yeah. the deal it should have been my bad man 
I was in my in my feelings. Not like, <laughs> how could you keep this thing I didn't care about from me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And I guess also it doesn't help that like, oh, I don't know. Like, Dean is just, Dean is an angry boy, right? He's lost everything. Yeah. Because he thought he was getting Sam back, but he didn't get Sam back. So he's pissed that he didn't get Sam back and he lost everything. He, he basically traded... And oh, he has to fix yeah, everything. He traded Lisa and Ben for a broken Sam. Yeah. yeah. And one that doesn't necessarily want to get fixed until this exactly. moment. Exactly. Yeah. So this is what... So Sam's like, yeah, who cares about like the, these sleeper cells of, of dogs? No one cares. He's like... I'm not your brother. I'm not Sam. But it just completely de- takes the conversation off a cliff. Um, yeah. Dean's like, okay. <laughs> He's like, blah, blah, blah about being the old me. Lisa and Ben Wright. I've been acting like I care about them. I don't. <laughs> I, lo- I love him so much. Now, <laughs> so I don't care. He's like, you wanted the real me? This is it. I don't care. I don't care about you. He's like, I don't care about you except, you know, I need your help. And you're clearly not going to stick around for much longer unless I give it to you straight. So, I've done a lot worse than you know. I've killed innocent people in the line of duty. I'm pretty sure it's not something old me could have done. Maybe I should feel guilty, but I don't. (laughs) I think that um, when uh, Jack is soulless, I I wonder if, like, Alex watched this because I feel like this was, uh, this reminded me of Soulless Jack, this whole bit. And this kind of reminded me of uh, Soulless Donatello yes. as well, because he's all about like KFC and like <laughs> that's all he wants all that's the time. So true. I mean, I don't blame him. KFC is pretty good, but like, yeah. Yeah, I do wonder because it is very similar. Like, you're right. Yeah, Donatello as well. I feel they must draw on this bit, this bit of acting, because like, this was the best bit, I think, mm-hmm. of Soulless Sam. Um, so Dean's like, can you get to the point, <laughs> you know? And um, Sam's like, I don't know if how I am is better or worse. It's just different. Like you get the job done and nothing hurts. It's not the worst thing, but I've been thinking. It was kind of harder. But there are also things about it I remember that. I... Let's just say, I think I should probably go back to being him. So like, it's kind of like he can recognize that how he is is wrong, but he kind of doesn't care that he's wrong. But he feels like maybe he right. should go back and not feel wrong anymore. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's confusing. The way he says it is confusing, but I understand what he means. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess this is this is it, right? I'm 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 gonna guess that maybe Adam Glass didn't write this yeah. part. I think this is probably Sarah Gamble's mm-hmm, input, mm-hmm. but. This should have been in a different episode. Yeah. This was this needed a bigger moment, I feel. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's just tacked on the end here and you're like, actually, this is quite important that, like, even soulless Sam recognises that he maybe needs his soul back. That makes sense. Exactly. This is the reason... Well, okay, this is... This was mentioned in the first episode yeah. of this season that... So, uh, Dean makes Sam better, mm-hmm. right? Because he he even said at that point that like, you know, I didn't even think to go after the family. Like I was just going to leave yeah. them. Um. So, th- so th- this is the where I'm getting kind of annoyed because like he already had this revelation, uh, yeah. but at the same time he was probably pretending as well. Well, this is actually like sincere for once. Yeah. Or is it? <laughs> or is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I don't think Dean knows either because he's like, oh, you know, we do what we got to do and we get my brother back. You know, it's like, yeah, back back to basics, get my brother back kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know if Dean necessarily even believes he's being straight with him at this point. Again, like, is it just saying what needs to be said to get stuff done? Because... Because Sam says himself that he thinks Dean was maybe like done with him a bit after this whole shenanigans. Right. So, but he still needs his help. So, 
The thing is, like, Sam doesn't actually need his help, does he? No. I mean, well, and getting an alpha is a difficult job, but like, yeah. he doesn't necessarily need Dean specifically to help him do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, sorry to jer- break this train of thought for a second, but I just remembered where, I, like, why this guy felt familiar. Uh, the lucky yes. guy. He looks like Ray Fiennes in um, Red Dragon. Yeah. He looks like the serial killer. He does. Red... That's yeah. a good shout. That's a good shout. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, back to this episode. Uh, yeah, like this feels like it was, should have been an important moment, but at the same time, is it really an important moment? Because like I, he is, be- so Sam is being the most honest yeah. he's ever been mm-hmm. because he's bringing up people that like, he's, he's just saying like, you know, I don't care. That's true. Yeah. Like he, he hasn't said that about himself mm-hmm. this entire yeah. time. Like he's always said that, you know, I, you know, always being manipulative. And at this point, like he's saying, you know, the, the thing that makes it feel like he's, he is being manipulative mm-hmm. is um, like, let's just say, I think we should probably go back to, I should go back to being yeah. him. Like, I don't think he really, I, I don't think he cares either way if he gets his soul mm-hmm. back. No, I don't. I think he just wants to be the old Sam maybe because like, I t- a part of me imagines that like life with no emotions is pretty boring as yeah. well. Like he's very like, he's very goal driven, but like, to what end, you know? I wonder if he can start to feel his, like, his body fall apart. Yeah, like... Because, like you said, in the, I think in the last episode, you're like, you have to sleep, otherwise, like, you <laughs> yeah, die. Yeah, you do! So I'm wondering if, like, Sam is starting to realise that he's not... Like, he, he, though nothing hurts, mm. he knows his body is not keeping up. So he's like, I should probably do something. Like, he's being selfish in that, like... If I don't get my soul back now, yeah. my I I will cease to exist. And like maybe part of it as well is like everyone else is making such a big deal about me getting my soul back. Maybe it's important. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh that maybe it is important. Like And also like he's he's talking about like so the only thing that he cares about is hunting yeah. and like getting the job done, right? Well, people are not wanting to work with him anymore because he doesn't have yeah. a soul. So he has no purpose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as that goes on, he will be lost. Yeah. And he, he's clearly not afraid of what would happen if, be, if he became lost because he would just carry on hunting, but just like in a different way. This is it, isn't I it? I guess. Yeah. I, think, I think he's being sincere as much as soul as Sam can be sincere in that he is looking out for his own interests. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, mm-hmm. I pre- I do. Yeah, you're right because with the bringing up like uh, Ben and Lisa and everything, I think that's right. But yeah, as it's a shame it's attacked onto this episode because this episode was, as I said at the beginning, pre garbage, 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 <laughs> garbagor, <laughs> rubbish, <laughs> trash. <laughs> uh, we don't we don't say that um, lightly either. Cause no, it was just we bad. put up with a lot from Supernatural, a lot, and we still say it's good. Mm-hmm. And I just was not in the mood for this one. I knew I kind of knew it was going to be bad going into it, even though it was a different episode to what I thought it was. Just it was, yeah. It's, <laughs> I'm I'm starting to think you have a thing against dog episodes, Amy. I do, one hundred percent. Except the <laughs> Scooby Doo episode. <laughs> But that's that's different because that's exactly Scooby Doo <laughs> is just different. It's differently. Um, yeah, it does. I don't know. It's a disappointment. Um, would not watch again. Don't need to. Yeah. So strike no. it off the list. Yeah, you can. But I mean, next episode though, I'm really looking forward to. I haven't yeah. watched it in years, so it's probably bad now. But um, <laughs> the next episode is Clap Your Hands If You Believe. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm excited for it. So, <laughs> is it a good one? Isn't this the fairy episode? 
You mean aliens? <laughs> I mean aliens. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> it is. Nice. Um, it's probably terrible. I rewatched it. I was like, why did I ever like this episode? Well, the thing is, so I'm just looking at who wrote it, and it is Ben Adlin. Ben. I mean, Adlin. who else? Who else would it be? Oh, I need to tell so, you this thing, but I'll tell you it in a minute. It's fine. Sorry. <laughs> okay, you can tell me. I can cut it out. It's fine. I, mean, I guess it. It does. It does. Okay. So, um, I was like, what, reading some of Ben Edlin's tweets because, <laughs> and someone asked him about yes. his opinion on like you know the whole Chuck situation. It's probably the most exciting mm-hmm. of the episode, and he said exactly what I said. I'm just saying, like same brain that. His theory is that Chuck is a tulpa. Oh. And, but he tulpered himself. So he started as a mm-hmm. tulpa and then got more and more powerful until eventually he just was God because he tulpered into God. And I was like, yes, brain, wavelength, me and you, Ben Edlund. I mean, that makes the most sense, to be it honest. Does. Yeah. So the same, same brain, same brain. Apparently, that's why he's my boy. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So I was really excited about that. I'll send you the tweet later, so you can read it exactly. Um, but yeah, I just, I was, I felt vindicated, justified, and also <laughs> sad at the same time that Ben Edlund never wrote anything for any of the later seasons. I know that would be really know. good. <laughs> Still to this day, but I mean, he did, he did like what probably nine maybe even ten seasons he didn't do that many i think only up to season i I can't remember i think i feel like it's eight but like yeah not that many but yeah exciting stuff so i was very i felt very very good that day (laughs) (laughs) his twitter is great by the way um you should read some of his tweets they're pretty good yeah i will Mm -hmm. do that yeah that was all that I had. I, that wasn't even about this episode. <laughs> or the next one. <laughs> I'm going to say that's fine because this episode is done and dusted. We'll be done with it and uh, we can never think about that's it again. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. So yes, yeah, so let's we wrap it up there. Is there anything else you want to say? No, there's nothing else. I got nothing. Nothing. Good nothing. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Um, yeah we'll excited for the next one though. So yeah. Um... So at the end of the episode, we would like to thank the Pixwagora for his wonderful artwork on our logo and stuff. You can get it on Redbubble um, and get it on our mug. Why not? You could put pens in it if you don't drink tea. <laughs> um, and you can find us on social media on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Blue Sky, everywhere else. Tumblr. Tumblr. Yeah. At Escaping Purgatory YouTube. Podcast. Yeah, YouTube as well. Or just Escaping Podcast on Twitter because I didn't have enough characters. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this week we came across a town with a ra- rather la- large dog population. It's ra- rather suspicious. Turns out these were not good boys. They're all bad boys. <laughs> So hopefully next week we can find our way out. <laughs> Thank you, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do no, that was fine. It was good. That was good. <laughs>